Okay, time for a quick video. I, I've got a Tesla Model 3 and a MyEnergy Zappi, and we're also on the Octopus Intelligent Go electricity tariff, um, which means allowing Octopus to control when the car charges overnight, um, which then gives us access to a slightly cheaper electricity rate. And it's been working okay. We've, we've set up the integration using the, the Tesla integration rather than the Zappi integration, which wasn't available when we first joined. And, uh, and we've had some issues. Uh, most of the time it works okay. Sometimes when we get home, we plug in, the car will just charge immediately rather than delaying the charge until overnight. And sometimes, like what happened a few, night, a few days ago, the car will just fail to charge overnight. So we wake up in the morning and, and the car is, is, well, it hasn't charged at all. Uh, which then means that we have to charge it at an expensive electricity rate and it kind of defeats the purpose of having this intelligent octopus uh, electricity tariff. Plus, on top of that, using the car integration rather than the Zappi integration means we can't take advantage of the, um, the solar diverting functionality within the Zappi. So in the summer, uh, when it's nice and sunny, the car won't accept any charge because Intelligent Octopus is preventing the car or preventing the, yeah, it's telling Tesla not to charge the car yet and to wait until the cheaper rate overnight, meaning that we're missing out on charging the car from our solar panels. So, um, fairly recently, my uh, Octopus introduced integration for Intelligent Octopus uh, or Intelligent Go Octopus with the Zappi and uh, and that should hopefully fix a lot of my problems because it will allow the solar diversion to work. And I'm really hoping it will also fix the issues with the overnight charging and the car charging when it's not supposed to. So I'm gonna try and do that now. I'm gonna try and disable the old integration using the Tesla integration and then reset up the Zappi integration. And I was doing some research on this. I couldn't find any other videos on it. So I thought, why not record it? Because it might be helpful for for others in a similar position. So, um, so yeah, let's get on with it. Also, this, uh, the lights are set on set on the uh, the garage and the house to come on at sunset, and uh, clearly it's just been sunset because they've all just come on. Anyway, let's get on with uh, trying to sort this car out, and fingers crossed it fixes the problems. Okay, uh, so I'm going to be using this this really useful. Um, document that uh, my energy have put together on the various options for Zappi and Intelligent Octopus Go. It goes through lots of detail here on the advantages and disadvantages of either vehicle or Zappi based integration with Intelligent Octopus. Um, and uh, this table here sort of summarizes that. And I think the most important bits here are the solar, the Zappi solar divert there. You can see it's a no under vehicle integration and a yes on the Zappi integration. Um, and that is enabled because the Zappi mode for vehicle integration has to be set to fast, whereas the Zappi mode for Zappi integration can be set to Eco Plus, which allows the solar diversion. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get on with this. Um, so it does, it will give you a warning about the, the firmware version on your, on your Zappi. My Zappi is already upgraded to V5, so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, I also need to make sure I remove any smart schedules. I do have some smart schedules, not smart, sorry. I have some, some boost schedules enabled, which I'll need to disable. Um, and I do not use OCPP, so that shouldn't be a problem. And then it says check the time and data accuracy can be corrected using, or sorry, time and data accuracy can be corrected using the, the update from cloud and auto DST functions. I am pretty sure that's already set, but I'll go and double check. Then it says, changing integration method. If you are changing between integration methods, then we advise you use the following process. Remove the current integration from your Octopus account, unplug your vehicle and then plug it back in and make sure the vehicle is not at the charging limits. Okay, so my car is not plugged in right now, but let me remove the current integration. Right here. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect my device. Okay. Oh, 
That's never good when the app hangs like this. Okay, cool. So I think that's worked. Right, let me go and just up plug the car back in. Okay, so I have removed the current integration from, the, from my Octopus account. I've unplugged the vehicle, plugged it back in again and, and made sure it started to charge. Then I've stopped the charging, unplugged it. And then let's see what happens. So vehicle integration, don't want to do that. I want to do the Zappy integration. In this mode, your Zappy controls the charging and as such your Zappy should be set to Eco Plus mode. Joining, when signing into My Energy through your Octopus app, you must use the same login method you use for the My Energy app. Okay, fair enough. Expected operation. When you first plug in your vehicle, it will not immediately start charging and will operate under the normal rules of Eco Plus mode, i.e. it will start it will take solar divert if you have it, and the thresholds are met. Octopus will generate a charging schedule for you sh your vehicle shortly after being plugged in. At the specified times in the Octopus schedule, your vehicle will be commanded to start boost and stop boost charging as necessary. No schedule is pushed directly to the device. If you wish to see the schedule, it's available in the Octopus app. The boost sent will be roughly for the amount of energy that can be delivered in the specified time period or less. If you have a 7 kilowatt charger and a boost of one hour is sent, it will likely be for an addition of around one to eight kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. As such, in the event of an outage with your internet, Octopus or My Energy, the boost may undershoot, overshoot, but not be, but not by a huge amount. Okay. In this mode, the Zappy continues to allow the solar divert, and any vehicle can be connected to the charger. However, when the Zappy is commanded to start charging, it simply makes power available. It is down to the car to accept it. If the Zappy reports charge delayed, that indicates it is making charge available to your vehicle, but it is not accepting it. Please see the troubleshooting steps below. If your device is put into either fast or eco mode, Octopus will command it back to eco plus mode. If the device is in stop mode, then the device will not attempt to charge the vehicle. If you want to initiate a boost yourself outside of the schedule, you can do so from the device itself the My Energy app or the Octopus app. In all cases, the energy delivered during a boost will contribute to the target energy delivered to the vehicle and on completion of the boost, the Zappy will return to IO mode. Octopus used the term bump in place of boost. It means the same thing, although it operates slightly differently. See the Octopus site, okay. Important note, a bump charge issued by Octopus can take a few minutes to arrive. It is not immediate. Also, there is a known bug in which if a bump is cancelled within five minutes of starting, then the bump cancellation may not be sent. If you want to make use of higher rate exports and not divert to the Zappy, then follow this guy. Okay, I don't want to do that. At least not now. Beta. What does this mean? This service is a beta product. A real world test with real customers from both MyEnergy and Octopus. So issues may arise from time to time. Although charging generally takes place during the night, Neither my energy or octopus have engineered engineering and support staff available out of hours. Blah blah. Okay, fair enough. So home assistant, I do have home assistant, but I'm not using it for Zappy integration, so that's good. Apart from just to monitor it, and then there's a troubleshooting guide, and then general troubleshooting. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, get ready for smart time. To get set up, you'll need to plug your car in at home. Make sure your charge limit is above your current charge so there's room to perform a test charge. Deactivate any other smart charging apps or devices that can tr currently control your car's charge. Okay, so I am going to quickly go into my energy. Go to my Zappy, which is this one, and then do scheduled and get rid of these. Okay, done. Okay, so I've got no smart charging in the Zappy. Right, cool. And I'm also going to change the Zappy to Eco Plus. 
Okay, so it's an Eco Plus. Right, so let's... Zappy, there we go, Zappy. Got a 7.4 kilowatt Zappy. Oh, do I need to tell it this as well? Model 3 long range dual motor, that one there. Okay, so this is where I have to sign in with my My Energy account. Oh, there we go. You're all set up. Welcome to Intel. Well, a few things before you know. Plug in any time. Okay, preferences you set in that will not override the preferences you set in your car. Intelligent Auspice Go will not go beyond your car set battery. Will occasionally do blah, blah, blah. Charging when you plug in. Your car might briefly charge at the point you plug it in. We'll stop this charge if it isn't part of our smart charging plan. If it doesn't stop, then something else might be telling you your car to charge. Charging too much for me. You may have other services charging your devices under charging me. Okay, so let's turn that down to 70. And I want it done by 6 a.m. Okay, so hopefully that is it. And if I look at this, so there's nothing, oh, there we go. So it's gonna charge at 9.30. Is that what it said? Wow. Yeah. Right, so I guess I'll come back and do a sort of finishing off thing tomorrow once I see whether this has actually worked or not. But, uh, but so far, so good. It wasn't too difficult to set up. Fingers crossed that actually does work. Okay, so it's now the next day and I'm happy to report it worked perfectly. Um, 9.30 at the start of the, the charging schedule that it, uh, it had created, the car started charging. Um, it charged for that half hour, then it stopped and it started and it did, did that all night, which was uh, exactly as was as as it had planned. Um, I have learned a few things though. Uh, there's a bit of a difference between the vehicle integration and the the, the Zappy integration. Um, and I had misunderstood one of the fields. So let me I'll share my screen. I'll put my uh, my phone back up again. Um, this charge to add that's now set to 30 percent. When you do the vehicle integration, you actually set the target percentage for the car. So, and I had misinterpreted that last yesterday. And so I had set it to add, well, I'd set it to 70%, thinking that that meant charge the car to 70%. But actually this means add 70% of the, the available battery in the next charging session. That's what the charge to add means. Um, which is why it started, why it needed to start charging so early at 9.30 because trying to add 70% of my battery using a seven kilowatt charger between 11.30 and, and 5.30 is not possible, so I had to start a bit earlier. So that does mean I'm going to have to manage this a bit more. Um, on the days that I were just doing normal driving, we're probably only ever going to add 20 or 30%, so I'll need to change this to something like that. And then before a longer trip, I'll need to remember to bump this up to charge it to get all the way to full or, or whatever percentage I'm trying to target. So there's gonna be a bit of maths involved to, to work out how much charge I'd like to add for the next day. Uh, but that's fine, um, especially if it allows the solar diverts and if it's reliable. So, um, so yeah, I uh, hope this video has been useful, uh, especially if you're looking to either join Octopus and take advantage of these uh, this tariff, or if you're already on Octopus and you're, you're wanting to move across the Zappy integration. Uh, if you're wanting to join Octopus, I'll include a referral link below. Uh, and if you use that, you'll get £50 credited to your account, as will I. So yeah, please do feel free to use that. Um, I'll also include a Tesla referral link below if anybody's looking to buy a Tesla. Um, I think it gives you Tesla 
supercharging miles or credits that you can then use for things. Um, and then I'll also, I'd also get some credits as well uh, if you use my code. So yeah, please feel free to use either of those. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this type of video or like this type of content, please do like and subscribe and, uh, and I'll, I'll see you in the next one.